Hello Vinyl community, hello VC. So today we have a first day here that is really warm and uh, looks like summer. So uh, people are running around in t-shirts about time. And uh, so I thought I'll make a little VC video with some records I've been listening to and some records I've purchased lately. Um, and uh, on the one hand uh, those are all jazz albums. Um, on the other hand, um, it feels quite fitting because they all have a certain kind of summary feel to them, at least in my opinion. So the first album I want to show you is a true classic and literally a milestone. I'm talking about Miles Ahead by Miles Davis. Um, this is a 19... no, this is a... this is a 2018 reissue by Jazz Images. Uh, with this cover, I mean this album exists with multiple covers. I mean the original cover uh, famously featuring a kind of blonde woman with a straw hat on a sailing boat. Um, I mean even I know that uh, this was a source of certain grievance and anger for Miles Davis uh, who oftentimes was not able to use the type of imagery he wanted in those early years of his career. Certainly no one told him what to put on a record cover uh, in his later years. So um, I will not talk too much about this album because uh, there are just some incredible Miles Davis experts in on the VC and uh, people that are so much more knowledgeable than uh, I am uh, in that context. But what I can tell you is that uh, this is a wonderful album that uh, once you put it on your turntable, it immediately radiates coolness and it immediately changes the mood of the room you are in. Uh, it's just a wonderful, mostly rather calm, laid-back, cool album. Um, I think, uh, as far as I know, uh, what uh, else makes this album special is that it's the first album that Miles Davis recorded on a flugelhorn. Um, so I think the sound of the instrument is slightly lower registered and kind of cooler, kind of less intense. Um, so um, this is probably one of the prime examples of a really kind of cool laid-back album and uh, obviously a uh, milestone of jazz music and uh, also um, a great example of Miles Davis uh, working with the Jill Evans Orchestra. So you also get this rather cinematic transcontinental sound on this record. Uh, so the music is on a very large canvas and it feels kind of very international and uh, very flamboyant and exciting. Yeah, so uh, Miles Davis, uh, Miles Ahead, I think originally released in uh, 1957 and certainly one of those albums that deserve the term Iconic. Now the next album, very different story. This is uh, Idris Akamor and the Pyramids and their album Shaman. And uh, this came out 2020, last year. This is a double album that uh, beautifully fuses uh, jazz with Afrobeat, with the occasional taste of funk and soul. The funny thing is, when I heard it for the first time, I immediately assumed that this is a band from Africa, maybe Cameroon, Nigeria, maybe South Africa. Um, they just have this kind of a African vibe to their jazz music. Uh, but later I found out that this is actually a band from Chicago, USA. So um, um, this certainly tells you something about their very kind of convincing style of music they are playing. Very lovely cover design by Tokyo Aoyama. Um, so um, that's certainly something I enjoy a lot. Uh, so uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful uh, kind of contemporary jazz album. Sometimes a little more spheric, sometimes slightly noisy, sometimes kind of almost hypnotic. Um, but certainly a very interesting and very adventurous discovery for me. Now, this one here is the very last uh, record I bought only a few days ago. 
Um, this basically just came out. This is a band from Belgium called Asmari. And this is their album Samai. And uh, this is a pretty cool instrumental jazz record. And the band plays music that is completely immersed in uh, Middle Eastern music and certainly a touch of African music. So uh, this creates this kind of a contemporary fusion sound uh, that is uh, slightly Arabic and most of the time kind of very jazzy. Um, out of this mix it kind of produces a certain vibe that also feels very kind of East European. There is something kind of balkanic about it and I would even I would even taste uh, a pinch of klezmer music to be honest uh, but this has more or less to do with um, the the music itself but kind of the way the instruments are appropriated and uh, kind of the, the way the melodies are set up. Um, it's a very interesting album, it's very enjoyable. There are some really wonderful uh, keyboard solos, your organ solos, so, so it has also, it has a kind of a, kind of a psychedelic feel to it in some moments. Um, as I said, this band is from Belgium. This was released on the Stebana records, uh, which uh, is the same label that has also released the Compro Oro uh, album that I have shown a while ago. Um, and so uh, I think this record quite beautifully continues uh, uh, this this kind of a modern jazz type of music. Um, it's not a very noisy album, it's actually quite accessible I think. Uh, it can be very kind of funky in some moments, uh, but at the same time there is also this kind of a southeast European feel about it, probably influenced by music from uh, maybe Bulgaria or Greece, uh, but most certainly Turkey or Iran. So there's this strong element of uh, Middle Eastern scales and melodies. So this is Samai by Asmari and another case of a wonderful cover design. Now the next album has a similar uh, stylistic approach to the music in question, but it sounds completely different. I'm talking about the album Kaltum by Ibrahim Malouf that came out in 2016. Now um, Ibrahim Malouf is a trumpet player. Um, this is a kind of a conventional jazz lineup. Um, meaning uh, that uh, you have here uh, the Frank Wurste on piano from Germany, uh, you have Clarence Penn on drums, Larry Grenadier on double bass and Mark Turner on saxophone. So this is kind of a Miles Davis type of uh, lineup and uh, which was fully intentional and uh, this whole record is basically kind of a concept album, a meditation uh, about uh, the Egyptian singer Um Kaltoum. Um, and it's it's kind of based on a musical theme that was written in 1969 by uh, Belige Hamdi Abdelhamid, who wrote and arranged a lot of uh, tunes for Um Kaltoum. It's a track called, or it's a composition called Alf Laila Wa Laila. And uh, that is like a thread that is going through the entire double album. So the motif from uh, this composition keeps reappearing in different, in different permutations. Um, again, you have kind of a conventional cool jazz lineup here that, that effortlessly blends elements of jazz and Middle Eastern music, uh, or in this case Egyptian music. It's quite a beautiful journey. This is a wonderful album that uh, it's a pleasant listen and a great example of this type of intercultural music. So this is Kaltum by Ibrahim Malouf. Um, and uh, certainly a nice discovery. I mean Ibrahim Malouf has a very, very big discography that uh, certainly waits for me to be explored and discovered. But it's almost a little bit scary because he really did so many albums and um, it always confronts me with the good old question, where to start? Well, I've started with this one and uh, let's see where it leads. Um, just a little CD in between. This is um, 
an album I have for many, many years, basically since the 90s. This is uh, Monday Michiru and the Paradox Band, Delicious Poison. Uh, so this is excellent, uh, very excellent uh, um, jazz rock, jazz uh, from the 90s uh, by a Japanese band. Great compositions, a very cool sound, kind of extremely uh, funky in parts and certainly a music that came to prominence uh, during those days of future jazz and new jazz and uh, while um, most of those outfits were kind of a sort of club dance DJ oriented uh, project so this is quite different here so this is a highly analog lineup uh, of kind of jazz and jazz rock musicians and uh, yeah an excellent album excellent record um, and uh, like w one track after the other is just a great listen they all hit the marks and you have some really outstanding uh, tracks here like Will You Love Me Tomorrow, uh, the title track Delicious Poison, Tattoo My Heart, Nadir. Uh, so um, this is certainly an album that probably should be a little, uh, little rediscovered and a little more appreciated. I don't know if it's not a little too dark. Here the light setting here. So, yeah, so I have two more albums. Um, this one uh, has or already become somewhat a instant classic. Uh, this is uh, Black Focus by Yusuf Kamal. So this is a uh, contemporary jazz funk and jazz from uh, London, from England. Now this this album comes with all kind of interesting and slightly funny smoke screens beginning uh, probably with the band's name which is Yusuf Kamal which is very kind of suggestive because if you say Yusuf Kamal you kind of think of a uh, kind of American American jazz musician from the early 70s that uh, uh, joined the Black Panthers and uh, turned to Islam and changed his name to Yusuf Kamal <laughs> and plays saxophone um, but uh, it's all just a small screen because uh, behind this name is actually a duo of uh, Yusuf Dias and Kamal Williams uh, who all both uh, have continued after this project here with their own successful uh, jazz records in a very similar vibe um, but this is, this is a really incredible album um, also the title Black Focus kind of uh, sounds like a particular statement so this is about Black Focus and then you look closer also you get this kind of Arabic letters here which are kind of provocative but if you look through these letters you just realize there's a photograph behind this which is just a black Ford Focus <laughs> which is kind of hilarious so um, you can actually see the car on the back of the record of the of the of the sleeve if you look closer so um, brilliant album kind of cool funky jazz record that is strongly influenced by the whole kind of future new jazz aesthetic so uh, you kind of feel certain relatability to kind of club music and to the kind of DJ kicks sound and dubstep etc. So in, in parts it's very modern, it's very playful with keyboard sounds and in parts very futuristic. Uh, but at the same time you get a very vibrant bona fide jazz record. So that's Yusuf Kamal, Black Focus. Um, now this was uh, followed by Kamal Williams' solo album The Return. Uh, it kind of a similar similar cover design. Uh, and uh, that's certainly not uh, a coincidence uh, because uh, it certainly feels like Black Focus Part 2. It's kind of hard to compare those two records uh, because they kind of re reflect uh, the same um, stylistic endeavors. Um, I would say um, the the solo album by Kamal Williams is in parts a little edgier, a little more aggressive, a uh, little more experimental. Overall both very cool albums and uh, kind of a good example of um, the British uh, 
jazz music uh, that's going on right now because this one here came out uh, like 2018 yeah so less than three years ago and uh, those are all records I have right now um, that I wanted to show you and uh, I don't know if you find this in any way interesting but uh, I will now switch off the camera and stop rambling and go and read a book or something have a nice day enjoy the summer I hope it's here to stay and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.